Okay, class. Now we come to the last subtopic, which is 1.11 solution stoichiometric. At the end of this topic, you should be able to solve problems related to solution stoichiometry. These are the examples of reactions that involve solution stoichiometry, gas formation reactions, gravimetric analysis, acid base titration, and redox titration. So all of these calculations involve stoichiometry. We will see on the next slide. Okay, let's start with the gas formation reaction. When there are no gaseous reactants, the formation of an insoluble or slightly soluble gas provides a driving process for a types of reactions that we call a gas formation reactions. Okay, so that is the definitions or the idea on the gas formation reactions. And now we'll move to example. When excess of sulfuric acid react with X gram of zinc, 500 ml of hydrogen gas is evolved at STP. Calculate the value of X. And this example comes with the equations between zinc solid and sulfuric acid in aqueous produce zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. So the gas involved is hydrogen. Okay. Solution. How we solve these questions? Um, Okay, so uh, 500 ml of hydrogen gas is evolved. So it gives the information on the volume of hydrogen gas, but you have to calculate the X. And what is X? X is the mass in a unit of gram for the zinc. Okay, so this is how you calculate. Uh, this is the step that you have to apply. First, you have to calculate the mole of hydrogen. Okay, from the, uh, because it's stated it, it is at STP. So, we divide with the 22.4 dm cube and uh, we will convert, we get the unit in mole. And from the mole that we have calculated, we can times with molar mass and finally we will get the mass of X or the zinc that uh, react with 500 ml of hydrogen gas in this equation. Okay, so for the checkpoint, let um, you will discuss with your uh, lecturer okay so we move to the next example of gravimetric analysis so in gravimetric analysis it is an analytical technique based on the measurement of mass it will dissolve an unknown substance in water and react with known substance to form precipitate so here we have to highlight the key point is precipitation Precipitation will be produced. And uh, it might involve a formation, isolation and drying or mass determination of a precipitate. In this slide, the example of gravimetric analysis is given. A 3 gram of sample alloy containing only lead and stannum was dissolved in nitric acid. Sulfuric acid was added to the solution which precipitated 2.93 gram of lead sulfate. Assuming that all of the lead was precipitated, determine the percentage of the stannum in the sample. So we want to calculate the percent of stannum in the sample given the molar mass of lead sulfate is 303.3 gram and for the lead is 207.2 gram per mole. The equation is also given between lead sulfate as a solid, produce a lead ion and sulfate ion. Okay, um, first you can calculate the number of mole for the lead sulfate from the 2.93 gram given the precipitate uh, can convert into unit of mole and from the stoichiometry one mole produce one mole and this is also one mole therefore we can assume it's the same number of mole of lead ion will be produced so from here we can get the actual mass for the lead okay and now, to get the number of um, stannum, we will minus with the total mass of sample or the alloy, 3 gram, with the 2 gram from the lead because in alloy contain of stannum and lead. So we got 1 gram of stannum. But this question required to calculate the percentage. That's why the last step, we will get the percentage, 1 gram, of stannum uh, divide with the total 
sample of alloy times 100% and you will get 33.3% of stainer. Okay, so this is another checkpoint you can try. Okay, next example will be acid-based titration. Okay, in stoichiometric, acid-based titration can be applied. Example here is a call, uh, you have to calculate the volume of 0.61 molar sodium hydroxide solution needed to neutralize 20 ml of 0.245 molar sulfuric acid solution. And given the equation, so you have to balance the equations. Uh, 2 mole of sodium hydroxide react with 1 mole sulfuric acid produce sodium sulfate and 2 mole of water. We can use this formula MABA over MBVB equals to A over B. Okay, and we can substitute the values and finally we can get the volume for the base which is sodium hydroxide that required is 16.1 ml. Okay, and the next is on redox titration. Redox is a process between oxidation and reduction that occurs simultaneously. The titration between reducing agent and oxidizing agent and the equivalence point is reached when reducing agent is completely oxidized by the oxidizing agent. And the common use uh, the commonly used oxidizing agents are magnet ion and dichromate ion. So we can see uh, the color will change from purple manganate uh, to light pink which is um, the manganese ion have been produced and for the dichromate ion, the orange yellow will turn into green which is chromium ion color. We move to the example, a 16.0 ml of 0.13 molar potassium permanganate is needed to oxidize 25 ml of a ferrum sulfate in an acidic medium. Calculate the concentration of the ferrum sulfate in molarity and the net equations are given for this equation, uh, for this example. Okay, so what are the steps that you can apply? Uh, because uh, this is uh, acid and base titrations, okay, and it involves the, uh, the concentrations, okay, so we can um, use uh, apply the formula M1V1 equals to M2V2. Okay, so M1V1 are referred to KMnO4, and V1 is the volume convert in unit of liter concentration for the acid, and 0 0.0025. This is uh, the volume of ferrum sulfate. So we got the uh, concentrations for ferrum sulfate is 0 0.0832 molar. Okay, calculate the concentrations. Uh, since uh, 1 mole of manganate react with 5 mole of ferrum sulfate, okay, therefore this value we have to times with 5 because of the mole ratio that, you, that we can see in this stoichiometric equations. And finally, we will get the concentrations is 0 0.416 molar ferrum sulfate. Okay, we move to the, uh, this is the checkpoint. Okay, so with that, we have end our topic one, methods and stoichiometry. So you can check again all the linear objective and make sure you will get all the learning objectives that have been stated in each of the subtopics. Thank you.